All right, hey YouTube, it's Marcus again. Uh, today we're gonna be doing sort of an impromptu video on uh, disassembling an Xbox 360 controller. Now, that is not this is not a Microsoft Xbox 360 controller. It's uh, one of those Chinese knockoffs that, uh, to feel of it, feels like it was made in the same factory that uh, makes the actual controllers. Uh, but this one comes with a wireless USB dongle, and my little uh, my little boy uses it to actually play Lego Batman 3 and stuff on his PC in his bedroom uh, because he's autistic and he's five years old. And uh, I wanted something where you know most PC games nowadays assume that you're using some form of an Xbox controller. So when they tell you you know spam a certain button to do something or whatever, they have these face buttons. So I wanted something where the buttons would match up. So even though I have a PlayStation 4. With the DualShock 4, I went ahead and bought this controller so that the face buttons would match up with what was printed on the screen. So anyway, uh, this is a Chinese knockoff. You can see that down here where the headset would plug in is just sort of filled in. And the X is not present on the uh, this button here. Which tells me it was probably literally poured in the same mold as the official ones. And then they just, you know, covered up the stuff that was not relevant. Uh, so what uh, what we're doing I'm taking it apart I'm going to attempt to take it apart and clean it because being a little boy he has spilled a coke on it and so the A button is really bad sticky and uh, so I'm going to take it apart and uh, clean it with some rubbing alcohol and see if I can get it working a little better for him so we've got our battery pack back here now I actually have rechargeable batteries in this uh, when it dies I just uh, put the batteries in a uh, battery charger lord have mercy there we go they're just amazon basics rechargeable double-a batteries and i've never taken one of these apart before actually i've taken apart my playstation 3 controller uh i had one that the uh a joystick broke on it or something and my little boy wanted to play with it so i took it apart and took the rechargeable battery out of the inside of it so that there was no way for him to accidentally short it out or make it leak so this is going to be sort of a new experience for me and you'll have to excuse uh, the background noise uh, my wife is at work and I'm watching the kids and uh, you know they've got cartoons and stuff running in the background and I have to leave it running so that I can keep an eye on them so um, we've got one two three four five six and I'm gonna guess another seventh screw under that sticker right there so let's get my little Phillips and see if it'll fit. Is that Phillips? Oh no, they are Torx head. So, hang on just a minute here. Alrighty, so I found a Torx head bit that fits. Uh, I've actually found it in my gunsmithing kit. Gunsmithing kits are handy to keep around, especially if you own firearms, because they uh, they have a whole bunch of weird uh, weird sized uh, screwdriver tips. Uh, this one is a CRVT9, if that tells you anything about the size of it. Uh, well, I guess T9. So let's go ahead and get some of these screws back down here. Now, if this is anything like the PlayStation 3 controller, the triggers are going to be sort of tricky to keep in. However, looking at this, I see that the triggers actually have a little bit of material here between them and the edge of the bottom half of the controller so they might not be the shoulder buttons though they bridge the gap between the two halves so they might be a little bit weird and uh, I was worried that might happen my Torx head bit is not long enough and I bet you there's one right in yep under the little QC sticker. Now, if this is an official Xbox 360 controller and there's a sticker there, you may void a warranty. This was like 20 bucks on Newegg from Shenzhen, China. So if I void the warranty, I'll just buy a new one. Yeah, I do believe this one, this hole, is too deep. So, let me see if I can find one of my small flatheads that works good enough. 
to reach down in there with and grab them. This one seems like it may a flathead and I'll basically just catch it between two of the points there and press real hard so it doesn't slip. Got her! See if I can angle you guys up a little more here where you can just kind of see there we are. I just realized you were basically just staring into the table. You couldn't really see what I was doing here. But basically, these two screws in the bottom. I like to use the correct screw when I can. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, these were too deep for that to fit because this was larger in diameter than the hole was. So I basically just took a flathead and sort of wedged it into that Torx head. But you'll also need a small screwdriver set if you want to do that. So, we have what appears to be all the screws out. So we should be able, let's just move our toolbox here out of the way. And we should be able to just sort of pry the two halves apart. And this is where things are going to get interesting because I hope nothing just falls out on the table. Got it. That was easier than I thought. Okay. So this back plate, the triggers just slipped out of it. And there it is. Now, I don't know how similar or dissimilar this is from the Xbox 360 controller. I know it works. It feels just like a 360 controller. It even has rumble function. He uses, uh, I've got Windows 7 on his. But uh, let's look here and see how things come out. Because we don't want to take out any more than we have to. So the rumble motors have little short wires, so we, we are going to have to unseat those because basically we need to pull this board out so we can get to the A button that's on the back side. And I said, I apologize for the noise, but I've got kids and my wife's gone, so kind of have to put up with the, the distractions for a little while. So these triggers, they're not just sat in there. On my DualShock 3 on the PlayStation 3, the like L2 and R2 buttons were just sort of balanced in there there was no mechanism for securing them in place when you broke the controller apart and so they were kind of odd uh, you know it took a little bit of effort to make sure that uh, they stayed in the correct position while I reassembled the controller but this there we go and so this right here is your controller this is you know here's your joysticks you know mounted to the board here uh, if you have indoor animals I don't know get a bald cat there is we get dog hair in everything there was a dog hair in his controller but anyway and you can see here where the d-pad contacts uh, touch your start and select your uh, a B X and Y contacts here you got your shoulder buttons up here because the board looks clean. That's not the problem. The problem is on the back side here. You can sort of see here's the uh, little rubber pads that make contact with the board. We're not worried about the D-pad, but I'm going to take it out just to look at it here. And there's also, you see on the rubber pad here, you see how it's got this little ear that sticks out and sits over that peg? That's to make sure, that just kind of helps hold it in place there. Because these little rubber pads are not electrically polarized or anything uh, in any particular order. You can see there's no wires between them or anything. So if you flipped it around backwards, it would still function. But that little peg keeps it from twisting and rotating uh, and getting out of alignment. So I'm going ahead and take it all out here. Oh, well, that's one way. We dropped one here. Where'd it go? There it is, I do believe. Let's try to keep track of everything. So there's B, Y, and the other start button. There we go. Okay, so we got everything. A is the problem. That's the one we're having issues out of. So there's A. And there is just some little bit of sticky gunk down in here. All the rest of these buttons function properly. Well, I know start is a little bit sticky. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same stuff that I use on my CB radios. X is a little sticky. So I think I'll just clean every one of them. Set them up the way they normally would sit. This one would be start. 
select Xbox. And the D-pad appears to be secured with some Phillips head screws. Two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and take those out. Because even though it feels perfectly fine, I want to just go ahead and uh, since I'm going this far, I might as well take it apart and make sure that it's clean. Because I don't want to have to do this again for a different button later when I can just go ahead and do it now. I don't know if you guys can hear the audio from that guy's YouTube video, but my little kids love watching him play Lego Batman. So uh, I will go ahead and put a link in the description to his channel since uh, his audio is in my background here. There we go. Alright, so those two screws probably released a second piece here. Yeah, I can see there's some little tabs here. You can see besides the screws now, there's little tabs in here and here that I will probably have to squeeze with some needle nose pliers. So let me get some real quick. Alright, so that is Zach Scott Games that they like watching uh, play various games online. So they have made, I know he has probably made more than a dollar or two in advertising revenue from my kids alone. There we go. Alright. I basically just used the points of this to reach down in and squeeze these two tabs together here so that the D-pad itself would slip out of its little dealio here and it appears to be clean I don't see any terribly nasty stuff so I'll tell you what I'll just put it right back in like do the reverse press bam secured and the d-pad itself keeps that from falling out and then we just use these two little screws that was in it to sort of tighten everything up so there's it's not wobbling around in there too bad but now this is cheap plastic so you don't want to just bear down on it So really, all we really need to do here is take some rubbing alcohol and uh, just wipe these buttons off. And uh, maybe run a Q-tip in and out of the holes that they travel through in here. So here's some 90% rubbing alcohol. I actually use this a lot of time for cleaning electronics uh, because I can use it uh, to clean like the cable on my CB radio stuff and it dries really fast. So I'll go ahead and take a little piece of tissue paper here. and uh, dampen it and we'll take the A button since it's the worst we'll do it first and just kind of squish it around in here and rub it. This controller was actually fairly easy to get apart and work on. Like I said my DualShock 3 controller was sort of a, of a pain. If I remember correctly it may have been a DualShock 2 but I believe it was a DualShock 3 that uh, was a little difficult to work on because it was so, the, the, the L2 and R2 shoulder buttons basically were sat in there in such a way to where you kind of had to balance them. Let's take our cotton swab here and just uh, run it around inside the holes. And just for good measure, let's go ahead and do the uh, contacts on the board here. Just kind of swab them with this rubbing alcohol. Just to make sure that there's nothing on them. That was sticky. Alrighty, so now we basically reassemble the controller in the reverse order that we took it apart. Now this fell out on accident on me, so I guess it is not held in place other than anything but the screws traveling through it. And it probably, you can see here that it has a little bit of a lip to it. So it appears to just sort of sit. Oh, no, there are some little pegs here. Let me get it lined up and then I'll show you. There 
there we go okay you did I did have to stretch it a little bit but you can see that there are some little pegs here there's one here one there and one there that poke into these little tabs on the bottom of this portion so now it's it's secured and now like I said we just uh, let's just start feeding things back in the way they're supposed to go we'll put, drop the A button now you can see that these also have these little uh, notches that will line up with slots on the holes for the face buttons themselves so that you cannot accidentally put them in incorrectly they will be facing upright once they're in place so there's our our A button so looks correct but we won't know if it feels correct until we actually put uh, put it all back together uh, this one goes for the d-pad here and you just stick the little ear back over that little slot and just kind of press it back down on there like that you can see that it does have uh, like a little rubber ring that kind of sits down over the edge of that a little bit and then this is for your face Xbox start and back buttons it's all one big piece it just kind of pops down and it sit these sit inside the holes in the backs of the buttons and now the joysticks, do the joysticks feel alright? Are they incredibly dirty or anything? No, they look fine. They've even got some grease in there, so I don't want to put alcohol in them anyway. So, we take our board here, making sure not to tangle or pinch or cut these wires for the rumble motors. And we place it back inside the slot here. And just kind of wiggle it around until it lines up. with all of its little you can see there's little pegs in various spots here that help you line the board up so that it goes back in properly so we have to kind of hold it up here hold it together with our thumb and you see these motors the rumble motors have these little weights on them they're intentionally off balance that's what makes them vibrate they just sort of sit down in these little slots here you see this little slot right I don't know if you guys can see it. Right. You see these little slots? They literally just kind of sit inside there. And then when the back half of the controller comes on, the back half of this slot will come around it, and that'll hold it in place. And we just place both motors down inside there, making sure to keep the wires in a position where they will not get pinched or, or cut or otherwise damaged. Like that right there and then we're gonna take the back half and we're gonna and we got this wire kind of tucked up out of the way a little bit better anyway so let's kind of get that out of the way there and kind of have to pry on the what I'm doing the battery these springs right here are contacts for the batteries and uh, there's a slot here that they poke through so that they will be exposed in the battery compartment and I'm basically kind of having to pry upward on those springs just a little bit to get it to sit over top of the triggers. There we go. Everything fits together nicely. All the buttons are functioning properly. So now we can start dropping these screws back into here and putting it back together. Now once we've got two of the screws in place that'll be enough for it to where we won't have to worry about it just falling apart on us there's one on that side one on that side oh there we go well, we remember we've got one two three four five six seven so
turn it backwards till it pops while you're pushing on a little bit and what that'll do that'll help you make sure that the screw is actually lined up with the threads and not being cross threaded alrighty that was still a little bit sticky alrighty so I did take it back apart and uh, clean the A button a little bit better with a q-tip and the recess that it sits in so now it's all good uh, we've got the wireless USB dongle connected to my computer here so let's give it a shot. All right, there's the start button, A button, and let's hit A on continue. All righty, so we got right joystick works fine, left joystick works good, there's A, X works good, Y works good, Back works, B works, right trigger, left trigger, and oh yeah, so, and that's all the buttons that uh, do anything, so, and the vibration works, part of the reason I wanted to do this inside of a game here, yeah, so vibration functions properly. Controller settings. Properties. And you can see here that there's the D-pad. All the buttons. That is how you disassemble this Xbox 360 controller. Uh, like I said, this is actually one that we use, my little boy uses on PC. Uh, big, uh, but... Uh, I wanted to show you guys how it's done. Now, I don't know if this is identical to an actual Xbox 360 controller or not. Uh, it seems like they literally poured it in the same molds and just didn't put Microsoft on it and, you know, took the Xbox out of here. So, it might be fairly similar. I'll put a link in the description to where I bought this controller. I actually got it on Newegg. So, I will put a link in the description or maybe somewhere right here on the video to uh, where you can buy this controller if you would like. Uh, and uh, I'm going to call that the end of this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. Again, I apologize for the background noise. Uh, I'm home by myself and just kind of shooting this video here and there when I've got a moment uh, because it's a weekend, so I'm off work, but my wife is working, so I'm watching the kids for the day. Anyway, as always, y'all take care. Marcus out.